Folks will tell your partners when you climax and no matter who you are. First of all, when a man climaxes, we just let out a little holler. Women climax, they go into that shit, man. Hey, ye, ye, God damn, God damn, God damn, ye, sir. Fuck, scared the shit out of me both times it happened. Men climax, we don't go into all that shit. It's like, I'm done. Can you imagine some people climaxing? Can you imagine somebody like Lawrence Welk climaxing? One of all, one of all. One and a two and I'm a through. Thank you, Bobby and Sissy, for sucking on my Hungarian rock. Oh, you know how to make it a bubble. <laughs> Gomer Powell climax. She rang him. <laughs> oh, all lay, Lou Ann, you sure know how to suck a Peter. <laughs> that bitch sucked a golf ball through a garden hose. Suck a dick, suck a dick, suck a dick. <laughs> Michael Jackson climax. Beat it. Richard Simmons climaxing. Oh, Michael. <laughs> John Wayne climaxing. Well, what do you want to do? You want to fuck or you want to faint? And I got to warn you, if you faint, I'm going to fuck you anyway. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart climaxing. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, sweetheart, yeah, 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 got the tightest uh, 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 pussy <laughs> ever, ever felt in my whole goddamn life. <laughs> but you got no tits at all. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know I was on your back. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of dark. This is my favorite, Jack Nicholson Climax. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, lady, I don't think your pussy's supposed to smell this way. <laughs> they offered him $8 million to be spokesperson at McDonald's for one year. Can you see Jack Nicholson as Ronald McDonald? I got your Happy Meal right fucking here. <laughs> Send your mama back for a quarter pounder. <laughs> Please say the dumbest shit to a drunk. You ever be drunk, stand on the street corner at three o'clock morning, can't find your car, your pants? Policeman always walk up and ask the same dumbass question. What the hell you think you doing standing out here? I always go, well, I hear the world's going around every 24 hours, and I'm waiting on my fucking house. <laughs> Won't be long now, there goes my neighbor. <laughs> Three little boys, her mama told them, said, I'm gonna bake you a cake, and then you can go out and play. Mama's baking a cake. It's a big jar of BB. She's hid from the little boys from the BB guns because they shooting all the neighbor's fucking dogs. They spilt over on the shelf, went in the cake batter. She made the cake, fed it to them. Three little boys ate the whole cake, went out to play first day. In about 30 minutes, first little boy come running back in and said, Mama, Mama, I went to pee and I paid the BB. <laughs> she said, goodness gracious. About another 30 minutes went by, second little boy come in and said, Mama, Mama, I went to pee and I peed a BB. She said, Gracious. About two hours went by. Third little boy come running and said, Mama, Mama, she said, I know you went to pee and you peed a BB. He said, No, I sitting out by the garage jacking off and shot the fucking dog. <laughs> Bitch. 
Bear and the rabbit in the woods, side by side, taking the shit. Bear looks at the rabbit and said, you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? Rabbit said, no, not at all. Bear picked him up, wiped his ass with it. <laughs> Blind guy walks in a bar, seeing a dog, picks a dog up by the tail, twirls him over his head. <laughs> Bart said, man, what the fuck are you doing? He said, just looking around. <laughs> Two guys hauling ass from a grizzly bear. Two guys hauling ass from a grizzly bear. The grizzly bear is gaining on them. One guy looks at him and said, oh, God damn, man, what are we going to do? We ain't never going to outrun this grizzly bear. Other guy said, don't you talk about motherfucker. All I got to outrun is you. <laughs> Three guys talking about the greatest pain of it all. One guy said, the greatest pain of it all is get one of them paper cuts. Right on the end of your finger, and every time you go to bend it for about a month, it goddamn stings like. It. Second guy says, "No, nah, greatest pain at all is when you zip your dick up in your zipper." <laughs> Third guy said, "No, nah, man, that ain't the greatest pain at all. The greatest pain at all is be out in the woods hunting, go behind a tree to take a shit, and sit down in a bear trap, and it clamp right on your nuts." <laughs> The other two guys said, I guess that does hurt. He said, no, nah, what hurts is when you run out of fucking chain. <laughs> Shit, I'm good to my old lady, too. I took her a dozen rows the other night. She said, you ain't fooling me for these. I gotta lay on my back and spread my legs. I said, ain't you just got a fucking vase? Pussy at my house is a rumor. I went home one night, she's packing her suitcase. I said, where are you going? She said, Las Vegas. I said, for what? She said, I understand out there, I get $400 a shot, what I've been giving you for nothing. I started packing my goddamn suitcase. She said, where are you going? I said, Las Vegas. She said, for what? I said, to watch you live on $800 a fucking year. My last girlfriend, North Carolina, fat, god damn. Big bitch. How big was she? For a Tampax, she used to roll a bounty in a rope. <laughs> big bitch. I took her to dinner one night, waiter come up. Said, want a menu? I said, no, a fucking estimate. <laughs> Big woman. At lunchtime, used to take a McDonald's just to watch the fucking sign change. <laughs> Big bitch. God damn, y'all getting into it. Y'all fuck fat women, don't you? I love them guys say, fat women got tight pussies. Yeah, you put enough meat in the Grand Canyon, that'll be a tight motherfucker, too. <laughs> I tell you the truth, she's so goddamn fat, I took her to the airport, she had on a pair of tight yellow britches, she been over, they split, two guys got in, thought it was a yellow cab. <laughs> Said it was the nastiest fucking cab they ever been in, too. How you doing, sir? Where are you from? What kind of business you in? Steamship? Oh, you bringing the shit in for us to smoke, huh? Women can do a little bit of any kind of drug in moderation. Us men, we gotta fuck it up. Women can do a little bit of drinking, they sit at the bar and have one drink in four hours. Now while we goddamn drinking, our mind's still functioning. We get through that first court and our mouth says, fuck you, I'm on my own. <laughs> Your mind says, tell us she's beautiful, tell us she's awesome. You'd give your right arm just to have dinner with her some evening. You look at the bitch and say shit like, My TV! Bye, got you. Ha! <laughs> shit. <laughs> bitch, look at you like a dog and hears a high pitched sound. <laughs> I like a good old basic drunk. Drunk stand on the street corner at 4 o'clock morning hollering, Somebody stole my fucking car! Somebody stole my car. Policeman walked up and said, 
Where was it? He said, right on the end of my fucking key. <laughs> Policeman said, we'll go down to Stacy's house and fill our report before we do, man. You better put your dick back in your pants. Oh shit, they got my fucking girl too. <laughs> Drunk standing on a street corner. <laughs> Three o'clock morning, his hand balled up crying. Yeah. Policeman come up and said, what's wrong? He said, my dick fell off. He said, what? He said, my dick fell off. He said, let me see. Open up his hand and said, cigar. He said, that's your cigar. Drunk started crying again. Yeah. So what's wrong now? He said, I smoked my dick. <laughs> the Jews and the Arabs got to fighting. Jews and Arabs get to fighting. One of the Jews snuck over there and set fire to one of the Arabs' oil wells. Arabs' oil wells blazing up in the sky. He didn't know what to do. He called the greatest firefighter of all time, the great Red Adair. He called him up. He said, Red, this is Arab. I got an oil well fire. How much you charge me to put it out? He said, $100,000. He said, $100,000. That's kind of steep. When can you be here? He said, it'll be about six weeks. Arab said, fuck six weeks, I'll burn up six million dollars worth of oil, fuck you. Went down through the Yellow Pages fan, Sadlowski's firefighter. Guy's Polak, but he's probably a damn good firefighter. He calls him up, said, Sadlowski, how much you charge to put out the oil well fire? Sadlowski said, five thousand dollars. He says, is that all? He said, yeah. He said, when are you going to be here? Polak said, how about this afternoon? He said, fantastic. Arab standing out there looking at his oil well fire blazing up into the sky. Up over the hill come a pickup truck with 10 Polacks in the back of it. Picks, handle, shovel, blanket, little electric fans and sand. They come over the top of that hill in that pickup truck. Got gaining speed going down that hill. 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 120 miles an hour. Run right in the middle of that goddamn oil well fire. Out jumped them Polacks, shoveling fucking sand, chopping wood, shoveling sand. Threw on a blanket, one set up the fan, one's pissing on the fire, one threw on a blanket, shoveling sand, chopping wood, set up the fan, pissing on the fire, shoveling sand, chopping wood, the fucking fire went out. <laughs> Arab standing there in astonishment. Walked out and said, which one is y'all sad last? Out walks this Polak, burnt all to shit. <laughs> said, I'm sad last. He said, here's $5,000 putting out the old well fire, and here's a $100,000 bonus. Now tell me, what you gonna do with all that money? Polak said, first thing we're gonna do is get the fucking brakes fixed on that truck. <laughs> I gotta go, I love you. You want to do one more? All right, let's do one more. Two drunks. Two drunks. They ain't got the price of a drink. Between the two of them, they got two dollars. One drunk said to us, said, okay, give me your money. We'll pull our money together and we'll buy a hot dog. Other drunk said, God damn, how's that going to help us get a drink, man? I got the fucking shakes and the dry heaves and God, I done threw up everything but my nuts. What the fuck? He said, well, get a hot dog. I'll take the hot dog, put it down in front of my pants. We'll go in a bar. I'll order us a drink. We'll drink it down real quick. When the bartender tells us the price, I'll zip down my zipper, pull the hot dog down. You jump down on your knees like you sucking my dick. The bartender will throw us out for queers. We won't have to pay for nothing. <laughs> Other drunk said, sound like a good fucking idea to me. <laughs> Went and pooled their money, bought them a hot dog, took the weenie out, first drunk, put it down the front of his britches. Went into a bar, walked up to it, said, I'll have a double bourbon straight up. And my friend will also, please. Brought them two double bourbons, they shot them down. Bartender said, that'll be. 10.50, drunk, zip down a zipper, pulled out the hot dog, the other drunk, jumped down on his knees, act like he's sucking his dick, bartender picked him up, threw him, get out of you, you queer motherfuckers, and don't come back. Drunk said, God damn, this is working. 
they hit 19 fucking bars. <laughs> Finally, one drunk looked at him, God damn! Man, we gotta stop this shit. My knees is sore from jumping down on the fucking floor. <laughs> Other drunk said, you think that's bad? I lost a hot dog in the third fucking bar. <laughs> I love you, thank you so Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the last comedy album Jay Hickman ever recorded. That weekend's performances are recorded forever on volumes 15, 16, and 17. Jay's health had been failing for several years with endless trips to the hospital and many weeks in intensive care. His doctors told him he only had a few weeks to live, and he knew they were right. So Jay scheduled a final comedy weekend bash, inviting all his friends from all over the country. But he felt his life slipping away, and he rescheduled his last show a week earlier. Taking heavy doses of painkillers so he could stand on stage and perform, he finished his last show, and then he died two days later, before his time still in his early 40s. Jay loved to make people laugh. His last request was that I continue to sell his tapes as long as people wanted them. The legacy he leaves to you, his fans, are on these tapes. Jay knew this was the only way to entertain you after he was gone, and he felt that in a way your listening to his tapes would keep his spirit alive. I'm Arnie Hoffman, the owner and producer of Laughing Hyena, and I'm proud to say a friend of Jay's. Jay, your tapes will make you live on, as long as I have anything to say about it. Rest well, my friend. We'll all miss you.